this is Mary over here at Images on the Page. I know I'm kind of in a different setup, but that's because I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to do a Boudreaux walkthrough for you. I don't think I've done my bullet journal walkthrough in over a year. The last one I did, I think I was in one journal. I probably have to go back and watch it. But yeah, it's been a while and a lot has changed. And I love my bullet journal. I love doing it. And I wanted to share that with you. So let me get started. I'm going to switch so you can actually see my bullet journal so I don't have to hold it up because no. Okay, so this is what the front of my bullet journal looks like. It Some people call it traveler's journal because there's actually like three journals in there. It looks like a lot more because there's like a whole bunch of paper in there, but I promise there's only three. And it's mine, unfortunately, is only held together with these two tabs, which I put a pen in, but it's kind of exploding right now. So this is kind of just what the in this is what the inside looks like. There's pockets for things that I like to hold on to. I have a picture in here, and then I use the first big one to actually hold my normal bullet journal that I use. So I actually just use the front cover of that. And this I have just a really fun, pretty colored page. Next is my index. I've got a couple pages for that. I've only gotten the first one just because of how I index. I just kind of go from page to page saying what it is. I don't do each individual page. So that is my key. I actually love this key. I actually love how this is set up. It's actually very simple. I don't really, this is like all I really need. Um, Cause I don't really do much. I don't move a lot of things or anything. I like these, they're tabs I bought for like two bucks, there's like 50 of them for two bucks on Amazon, and I cut them up so that I can make these little tabs on the side. And as you can see, like, purple is for booktube things, pink is just a normal journal entry, blue is a collection page, green is a story idea, the few and far I have, the very few I have, and then orange is a book review. Next is my future to-do list, and I actually love this because it's sticky notes, so I'm really bad at keeping up to date with the normal calendars just because they're too small and I can't get enough information. So these, I just have the dates written down and what is happening that day. I have to actually go a bit further because I only have the next three months. This is my, I call it the app, the movies. Um, I'm supposed to be tracking the movies I've seen and watched and what I felt about them, just general stars. Um, the last thing I have in here is Black Panther, which I saw like two jobs ago. So this is, this is very much not up to date. And then this is my reading log. I did actually really enjoy doing this. Um, this part was a pain in the ass. Um, but I have my titles here, the author, number of pages, when I finished them, and what format it was. Um, I'm supposed to continue on to the other page, but I'm really bad at keeping up for stuff like this, which is why I don't do a habit tracker. So one thing I do really like doing um, is when I start a new month, I put washi tape on the edge just so that I can kind of see it when it's all together. Um, so this is the start of my April one because I actually moved into this journal mid month. I only have it half filled out. My attempt at a big habit tracker, but you can see I don't, I'm not good at those. And this is how I like to do my weeklies. I don't do this part anymore, but um, I like to do the week, main week across with just like my work schedule and anything that I have to get done. And then each day I'll have that as well as like other things that I might want to do like film, edit. Um, and that's just kind of generally how I keep my week. Here's my May one, kind of same setup. Um, here's what it normally looks like. Sometimes they're filled in better than others. As you can see, I didn't, I'm not always the best about filling it in, but I just, I like writing it down so that I know kind of what's coming up. So here's like a good thing that, that's why I like it to have it all together is like, here is like a, for booktube I did the LGBTQIA book tag and here's the questions and my answers to them. Um, I was planning a review apparently. This is a review I did about a book I DNF'd. Here is actually where I started doing TBRs um, and I kind of like doing TBRs. I might go back to them but I'm really bad at TBRs because I am a mood reader. Um, I started off with, I think, just these books. <laughs> As you can see, I kind of ran out of space, so I had to start moving them sideways and fitting them in different ways. 
I tried this new habit tracker, not habit tracker, uh, new layout, where I had the weekly here, my extra stuff down here, so it took up, because like my, this setup takes four pages. This one would only take two, but I didn't really care for it. Here's my book stacks, which I really do like. Um, another reason I love having a bullet journal is I kind of add things to it um, as it goes on and I do things. So like this week, I went to go see a play at the Circle Theater by my house called Fun Home, which is based on a graphic novel by Alison Bechdel. So I just put some of the, just a few of the pages from it in there. Called it good. August, this is actually one of my favorite kind of headers. I still like doing this. Here's my TBR again. Once again, gigantic. Um, here's some video ideas. I'm really bad at that as well, so. Here's another version of the other one I tried. I did this one for a while. Um, and then, like, here's some pictures of my friend's bridal shower. I actually didn't mind this one, um, but I just, I like having more space. Oh, some things without tags. September. I always end up doing this for September and I don't know why and I always love it and it drives me crazy. Here's something I started new where I have just the month with a cool like picture on it. I don't really do a hello page. Um, and then here's what I started as a habit tracker budget page which this has gotten way bigger. Um, what my TBR is and room to obviously grow and then video ideas. Here is October. I actually did really enjoy October because I started using watercolor. Once again, TBR. I had only two and I apparently didn't read any of those. Um, this I went on a trip and this is just me kind of talking about what I did each day, which I really enjoy doing because it gives it... I can kind of remember it a bit better. So I think I stopped too early. Well, there's day eight, day nine, and... I think day nine was end, so I think it was a 10-day trip. And we, we we came home one day early, so we had time to relax. November's, I do, I like this part of November, but this is very undefined to me, so I don't love it as much. Here's things changing. I go back to my old style. Um, here's December. Um, this is when I do my new budget page. I kind of like this better. It's set up a bit different, so I have it where I have it, what I budgeted how much I actually spent, what the difference is, and if I come out positive or negative. Did not fill that in, but I did fill in my expenses, which I have also changed. Um, here's just a random packing list I needed. And then I did do um, like a hello page for the new year. It's like the only time I do hello pages. January is probably one of my favorite layout not layouts because the layout's the same but one of my favorite because i did watercolor and i did a kind of mixed medium because this is actually a paint pen the white it's just i think it turned out so well i actually did really well on this budget page um but then i started slacking on my weeklies which is not so great but yeah here's so great i did another tree with i don't know if you can tell but kind of icicles i liked it okay i'm not the best at watercolor i'm, I'm trying to learn let me get to some of the more recent ones. Here's March. Uh, once again, did it in watercolor with these marker pens I have, kind of like paint sharpies or whatever. I really do love this setup. I don't know, it just works the best for me, even if I end up not using it. Like, I don't feel upset because I have the potential to use it. And I would rather leave space here for me to be able to use it, even if it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about here, instead of not giving myself enough space. Here is April. actually had a lot of fun doing April, although flowers are really hard to draw. Here's a new expense thing I'm trying. I failed miserably. I'm more one to update that at the end of the month though. Um, and this is actually caught up. Here is a couple of reviews I have to tab. And then I have like very few pages. Like I don't know if I'll even be able to get the month of May in here. And then in the back, which is why I have 800 pages, I have my work schedule, I have next month's, no, that's this month's schedule, and then I also have next month's schedule so I can start planning ahead, as well as some other things that I always need, because I always have my bullet journal. Now, the reason I wanted to do that was not so much for this part, although I do like that, is for these extra things. 
So as you can see, I have two other journals in here. This one is kind of more of my book journal. Um, really fun front inlay. Um, this is a book series tracker I'm doing. I forget where I saw it. I saw it somewhere on Instagram. Um, but they have an actual like book, dedicated book bullet journal. But they do the series tracker because like how many of the, you've read of the series. As you can see, I've not finished any of the series on here. The next, um, I left a page so I could go on to the back, is my own to read books. Now this is very short. I can tell you right now I own way more books than is on this list. These are the ones I just think I would have gotten to first. So I have the title, the author, and the red date. And you can see I have not read any of those. This is my new books to read in 2019. I can tell you I've read more than three, but I kind of like the setup because it's um, it goes across the two pages and it's title, author, the identity of the author, the number of pages, the genre the book is in, what representation is it, and if it was owned voices or not. This um, I've also kind of converted into an Excel sheet, which I might share down below, just because that I've added way, way more. Like I have genre, second genre, main character representation, side character representation. I think I've added format, and that's actually the end of this, but I'm hoping that it will I'll come up with other ideas and grow. I just actually saw... Oh, Megan over at Tome Infinity, she did um, kind of a book journal, but she did it in a sketchbook and I'm really kind of jealous of some of her layout, so I might steal that. This one is a book that has more of everything that I just always need. So just things that I don't want to transpose to journal to journal. So like this is my student loans, how much I owe. Um, the next one is like the birthdays, which I kind of need to fix because like I have all these colors going off and I had to white them out because they didn't, they weren't working right or whatever. Um, actually really need to update that. Not everyone's birthdays on there. This is another budget thing I tried. Um, just like the bills I have in 2019, which I did really enjoy, but I kind of like tracking where I'm spending things incorrectly. This is that book rating system. I talked about in another video. I still do really love this system. I just really bad at using it. Um, in the middle, it's weird that I jump around, I know, but I don't know. It makes sense to my brain. I have right here is my actual books to own. This is forever long. So the this first half is actual physical books, which I need to update because I've probably bought enough to fill the rest of these. And I forgot this was here, but the rest are ebooks. And as you can see, I have almost two full pages worth of ebooks, and there's like, this isn't even all of them, I just stopped because I got bored. Um, this is probably one of my favorite doodles, though. And then what I have in the back, which I've kind of also stopped using because I've changed it to a different area, is my To Be Read. So just books I found that I really am interested in and want to read. I've kind of moved this actually utilizing Goodreads because I have a want to read list in Goodreads, as well as a definitely want to read. So the definitely want to reads are ones I'm 100% really want to get to. The want to reads are ones I'm interested in but might not get to. Um, so, and then I have a DNF for books that I have DNF'd. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but that is my bullet journal. Um, as you can see, it's kind of gigantic. It doesn't always close all the way. I do need to get kind of a bigger traveler's journal, but I love this cover. But if you have any questions or if you actually do a bullet journal and you have you've done a video for it or post pictures on Instagram or whatever, please feel free to show me. I love looking at bullet journal stuff. I love looking at what other people do. Some people are ridiculously creative and I can't. And the more minimalist people I also really enjoy because I'm, I'm not capable of that. So, but if you, if you but, so if you wanna send me links to any of your stuff or of other people who really love doing it, please feel free to share links down below. Like I said, I am a Bujo fiend. I'm on my third bullet journal. I have like four different kinds of pens. I have my own washi container over here. I'm just, I'm ridiculous for it, but well, until the next video, ta-ta for now.